This is day two of Vibe Coding Elden Ring, and this is what I have so far. So I imported a character model from Mixamo. She can move, strafe left and right, swing her sword. And then this is the environment where I imported a couple 3D models from Sketchfab and some textures as well. And now in day two, what I wanna do is make sure she spawns in the center of like a cool looking arena, and then also imports like some kind of monster that she's gonna be fighting against. And by the way, to code this entire thing, I'm using windsurf ai with claude 3.7 sonnet so this is my windsurf chat mode on the right and then let's start by just branching out so let's call it get branch feature boss cool and the first thing we're gonna do though is import the arena because i just wanted something cool where she can spawn so to do that head over to sketchfab where you can download some free 3d models and then search arena okay this looks good enough for now let's download this 3d model Download the GLB file. Okay. On models, I'm going to create a new directory just for environment types of models that we have and drop it in there. Okay. So hell underscore arena. I'm just going to rename this to arena. So for those of you not familiar with Windsurf, click the at sign so you can add context. I'm just going to type arena to so it grabs the file. So I added a new 3D model arena and I want the main character to be loaded in the middle of the arena. Okay, and I'm using Claude 3.7 here, so it does take some time to like think through stuff. You can see it's saying I'm gonna help you load the arena model and position your character in the center. Now it's adding the arena model to the scene and positioning the character in the center. By the way, for those of you who don't know, I'm using 3.js and React 3 Fiber, which uses 3.js to be able to render this 3D scene. And this is the function to actually load the model, use GLTF. Okay, so it's now sharing its thought process and what it's done, created a new model, position the arena in the scene, and censor the character's arena. I'm going to click accept all, and then let's test it out by running it. So npm run dev over here in the terminal. All right, so here I am spawning in the middle of this. Not as epic because it's pretty tiny, so we can scale it up so it's like really big next time. So let's say let's scale up the arena 3D model. So it's pretty big and scary and the character still spawns in the center okay let's do that real quick and while we're doing that i'm gonna go ahead and start downloading the 3d model for our boss so i'm using mixamo which is really cool from adobe it has a bunch of free 3d characters and animations so first thing over here is click character and then we're gonna search mutants you can see it right here though okay so i'm gonna start here okay and then the first thing we're gonna do is download this mutant so click download Make sure this is in T-Pose, okay, and click download. And the next thing we're going to do is download a bunch of animations for this character. In general, the process is like figure out which 3D model character you want to use and then download the animations you want for the character and then code the game logic for those animations. So here in animations, just search mutant and you'll see a bunch. Let's get this one mutant run so that like the, the boss will be coming after us as the player. So here, click in place and then click download and then make sure you select without skin okay and then click download what this means by the way this in place it means that the animation is applying when it is not moving so it's technically like running in place and then we're going to use game logic to tell the boss where it's actually running to okay so once you've downloaded that next we're going to search strafe you can click on the animations, by the way, to kind of like see what it looks like. So this one looks pretty good, left strafe. Again, select in place, download without skin, okay? And then just use this same strafe, but then select mirror, and then it's gonna be going the other way, okay? So it's exactly the same animation, but mirrored, okay? Then search walk backward. Let's do this third one. And again, select in place, download without skin, download. So now we have like all the basic animations, but we need some kind of hitting kind of attack animation. So search mutant again. For my game, I'm actually going to incorporate a lot of these different types of attacks, but for now, let's just choose one. So for example, here, mutant swiping, this looks pretty good. Just click download here. So just make sure again, every animation is without skin. So click download. Okay. So now I think we've got everything. Let's check our downloads folder. Okay. I'm going to rename this to right strafe because this is left strafe, right strafe. Okay. And then what we're going to do is just drop it into a new directory over here. So under models, you can see we have our character with all of its animations. Then I'm going to create a new directory called boss. And then I'll just drop the files over here. Okay. Windsurf is done here. I'm going to reload the map since it is supposed to make the arena bigger. Okay. Now you can see the bigger arena and now it's going to load the character right in the 
the center of this bigger arena. So that's pretty cool. But now that our next task is actually to load up the boss model that we just downloaded. So I'm gonna tag like the boss folder. Okay, similar to the character model and animations. Import the boss model and animations. Scale up the boss so it's huge and scary relative to the character's size. Okay, let's just start with that first. And then after we import everything, we're going to implement logic for the animations, running, strafing, walking backwards and swiping. Takes some time, like I said, for 3.7 to run and my Mac's not doing super well here. I'm gonna close the game right now. I do really enjoy 3.7 Sonnet with Windsurf. Um, for a long time I used Cursor, but I've been trying out Windsurf. I do like the UI a little bit better. In terms of the results, I mean, it's pretty similar to Cursor. Although I've definitely heard people saying Cursor's gotten like worse lately. Okay, here's the thought process. I've successfully integrated a massive intimidating boss into your Elden Ring inspired arena. So I've created the boss components, loaded the animation, made the boss enormous 7x scale factor. So the boss starts at an idle slash run animation stance and every 10, so we'll probably want to change like its behavior, basically its behavior tree. But for now, let's, let's load it up and see what it looks like. Okay, that's way big. <laughs> so that's a little too big. I can't even tilt the camera up to see it. Let's say let's scale. First of all, let's scale down the boss. So it's only 2x the size of the character. So that's number one. I'll also say implement the basic functions to control the boss. So things like moving, strafing, and then swiping. And then the next step after we actually implement the controls for it is we'll have a little AI, not really, but just a mini behavior tree to the boss what it should do. And it's just going to be really, really basic to begin with. Like the boss should, you know, rotate towards me, the main character, run towards me, the main character. And then when the boss is close to me, try to swipe me. I don't have hitboxes or collision implemented yet. So we're just going to run through each other. But that would be the next step after we've got kind of the basic behavior tree down. I'd say besides dragging and dropping like some of these models, animations and texture into directories like this is pretty much 100% coded by AI I really haven't had to make a manual changes however like that doesn't mean it hasn't gotten stuck it, there have been times where I've had to say like basically the same thing 10 times until it would figure it out um, but still it's it's been pretty fun to vibe code this okay so let's accept all changes so it reduced the boss scale and oh no I, now i actually can control the boss with my own keyboard all animations blend smoothly proper animation state all right let's go try it out okay here's our scene there's the boss okay much better oh and he's running towards me i need to implement like some camera thing so i can actually look up at the boss i actually don't know where he's going so it's kind of like a very dumb boss at the moment that's pretty cool i'm just gonna take a screenshot of this real quick Close this out to save my laptop. I really need to update my laptop. Okay. Analyze the screenshot of the game. Since the boss is tall, I want to be able to look up with my camera at the boss. So basically I want to be able to just tilt my camera, you know, so I can see what's up there, the rest of the boss's head. That's funny, it's a, this is a critical feature for souls-like combat. I assume it's referring to Dark Souls. Uh, yesterday in day one, like for setting up the environments, biggest challenge was just around like lighting and making it look good and playing with textures and stuff. Cause I've never really played around with like 3D models and texture. So it was a learning curve for me, honestly. And what I would do is like when Claude saw the 3.7 was busy, thinking for five minutes, I'd go to O3 Mini and just have it explained to me like, oh, what are textures? What are X files? What are GLB files? All that kind of thing. Well, the promising user here, it seems to understand my request. So currently your camera only rotates horizontally around the character, but for a proper Souls-like experience, you need to look up at taller enemies, okay? So it seems to be doing what I want. So update the current camera look at functionality so that vertical mouse movement will change the camera's vertical angle, which is pretty much what I want. And what's cool here in Windsurf is it will actually run the terminal command. I have noticed though, especially if you're installing stuff like npm install, the Claude just like stops working. Like it neither runs the command nor continues. So I don't love this feature right now. I'm kind of finding that buggy, but that's okay. Let's accept all. I'm just going to reject that. Okay. And then let's load up our game. And by the way, the reason I'm closing it is because 
with with a game and my screen recording my laptop is like is dying so oh no but now i can't see my own character that's cool though it's like pov style oh no but i want to see my own character okay so here i'm gonna take another screenshot here the vertical cameras vertical angle now changes but i still want to see my character from a third person point of view i do not want first person point of view okay so let's see if that updates and hopefully once we sort this out the next thing we can work on again is that basic mini behavior tree so now you can already see the boss running somewhere but it's it's kind of dumb like we want it to be pretty much always facing us trying to trying to kill us try, trying to get close to us and swiping us with his big blue sword thanks claude i can see you've got a great view of that intimidating boss in the forest setting okay so the improved camera system maintains third person perspective and allows vertical rotation okay let's try it out oh that is not great i don't even see the boss Ooh, that was that did not work so here's an example of claude sonnet not exactly doing what i want I don't know if this screenshot will help it. I will say, no, that didn't work. The camera is still first person point of view and I cannot see my character. I want it the way it was before where I could see my character and I want to be able to tilt the third person camera. So yeah, this is an example where, you know, it's, it's a little annoying that Claude Sonnet keeps saying it's doing what I'm asking for, but it's not quite doing it and whether it's claude or chat gpt they'll always say like yeah i understand the bug i'm gonna fix it right away <laughs> it's always promising but you know sometimes it gets stuck here in its conclusion it says you can now look up at a tall boss without losing sight of your character but clearly you know we couldn't okay let's try this okay now we're back we are back here we go okay here i can tilt the camera up a little nauseating but oh no okay again we don't have hitboxes or collision the boss is just stuck okay okay i'm gonna close this out now okay we've got that decently working thank god you never know when ai is gonna get stuck like that you have to ask 20 times so i'm trying as much as possible not to code this and just let ai code it vibe code it okay so now we want to implement a mini behavior tree for the boss so for example like boss rotates towards the player moves towards the player Actually, i'm gonna say character for consistency when the boss is near the character at the character in an attack motion okay and that should significantly help make the boss less dumb but next we still kind of have to implement collisions and hitboxes for it to actually make sense it's really interesting that it keeps referring to soul like dark souls even though all of the project context is i'm building elden ring but it started saying authentic souls like experience and i don't know if anyone else is experiencing this too but like pretty much every request i send says generating this is taking way longer than expected and by the way the reason i decided to vibe code this is because a couple of weeks ago i made a tiktok video sharing something on twitter that i thought was cool someone said they like vibe coded this game which looks like elden ring but i actually believed that they coded it and it was a joke and i totally fell for it and i, I really thought he had like vibe coded this thing I posted it on TikTok, Instagram, obviously admitted I was wrong and everything. But then I was very curious, like, why can't I vibe code something similar? And I wanted to really see what I could do, especially with everything in the browser. So this is just using 3JS and React 3 Fiber to do all of this. And obviously you're not gonna be able to load like a super massive world, but still you could probably load individual boss fights and it would be a really cool game. So I started vibe coding this yesterday uh, and this is day two of vibe coding it. Okay, so now it's done. And this is cool. So I have special testing controls to actually do the behavior of the boss. Like I can force switch pursuing an idol. So let's try that. And then reset the boss's position R. So I didn't ask for any of that, but that was cool. So let's try T and R. Okay, it's loading. All right, let's see what we got so far. Okay. It's coming after me. It's wait, let me click T. Oh shoot. T oh no oh okay that just reset it oh my gosh my browser shortcuts are tnr so this, this is not super great <laughs> in terms of the controls i have to turn off vimium on this because the r is refreshing the browser <laughs> hang on so let me manage extension excluded urls yes actually at gmail but i'll also do okay save changes oh my goodness okay 
Let me refresh this. Okay, here we go. Now it's running after me, it's running after me. Press R. Okay, now it reset it. And for those of you who don't know, Vimium is like, it's a Chrome extension that allows you to use Vim to navigate your browser. And it's super, super handy, I love it, but I do have to turn it off for certain sites where it doesn't make sense. Okay, so T. T toggles between the idle state and the running. So it is running, it is trying to run towards me, but I think it's stuck in the little arena, right? Okay. So that's pretty cool, actually. I'm Sabrina Romanov. That's it for day two of Vibe Coding Elden Ring. And probably up next, we'll be implementing the hitbox and collision system so that the character and the boss can basically try to hit each other and reduce each other's hit points. Hit like, hit follow, drop a comment below if you like this kind of stuff.